G'day folks, Jeff here with my review of Dead Congregation, Blood Incantation and Faceless Burial. G'day folks, welcome back. Here I am in my rather windy backyard, just about to head off to Sydney to go and see Dead Congregation, Blood Incantation and Faceless Burial. I've seen them all before, but yeah, what the hell. All those three bands together, it's fine by me. This will be at the Metro, it's at the Metro Social, which is a different venue in the Metro, which I haven't been to, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I saw Dead Con Congregation at MDF, or oh, I don't know, 2011 or 2012, somewhere around there probably. And I thought they were killer. I remember them posting online afterwards how crap a show it was, from their point of view, but it sounded bloody good to me, so that would have been on their first album. So, very keen to see songs off their second album as well, because that's a ripper. Uh, Blood Incantation I saw with Arcturus a couple of years ago. Uh, <laughs> a few too many beers were had that night, and Blood Incantation's a little hazy. <laughs> I think they had a marginally muddy sound, so I'm hoping for better tonight, but yeah, I love that band. They're a bloody killer, so yeah, a couple of quality albums of theirs worth of material to listen to. And Faceless Barrel, I think I've only seen maybe the once, maybe twice. Um, Yes, I reviewed one of their, their previous gig in Canberra, which uh, I'll put a link to. Quiet Magpie. Uh, uh, so yeah, they're Killer Live. I have brand new album out, which is a bit of a ripper, so yeah, looking forward to them. Anyway, it's getting windy here and I've got a four hour drive ahead, so enjoy. couple of days later now and I've decided to write down my thoughts instead of my usual film it straight after the gig when I'm half cut and just rambling on about yeah they were bloody heavy <laughs> so anyway this is a slightly slightly more articulate review um the gig was on a Friday so I had the day off work which was very nice um headed up the road to Sydney and yeah I had a good fun bit of um Formula One chicane action trying to avoid all the friggin potholes been raining a hell of a lot around this part of the world and the roads are pretty crap although by the time I got in the Hume at least that was decent quality um, scooted up the Hume and then after a few hours I was a bit hungry so I'd seen a sign and I stopped for drive through pie shop no way I could resist that I'm a big fan of pies and more importantly sausage rolls um, so yeah I thought I'd filmed me going through the drive through but obviously I I hadn't pressed the proper button on my phone, but oh well. Um, there's a, a photo coming up of the, the products, so that was all good. Um, I ended up ordering, I didn't actually order a pie because I wasn't super hungry, but I got a quiche, a bacon quiche, which was pretty bloody nice, and a sausage roll, which was tiny, as you'll see from this picture. It was not very big, it was like my thumb, but maybe slightly longer. <laughs> Yeah, ripped off. I should have known it was only like $2.65 and all the pies were like, I don't know, 6 bucks or something. So should have been a giveaway, but they, they also should give you a warning that, Oi, you're a growing lad. You might need more than one sausage roll. Anyway, it was very tasty. I'll, I'll rate both 7 out of 10, I think. I decided to uh, rate my food intake over the weekend, which was all naughty, uh, as <laughs> as it always is when I go on a road trip. Um, so yeah, I was bit peeved with that but yeah what the hell so onwards I went to Sydney and checked into my hotel which was Hotel Hacienda in Redfern which was yeah, perfectly functional nice rather <laughs> tight room but uh, it was a comfy bed and I had parking there so yeah very happy with that they had a taco place downstairs but it was too packed when I went out for dinner so I didn't bother um, and then but yeah as I had a couple of hours to kill and was too lazy to do anything else I just lay around watching TV and about the only thing on on free to air which is some, something I don't usually watch because I have a lot of other things to watch um, the only thing on was Murder She Wrote so good old Angela Lansbury there was a Star Trek episode on but stupid channel wasn't working so oh. but yeah that was fun so then yeah chuffed off to the city and into an Uber um, so that dropped me off on Pitt Street which was a bit weird seeing like it was one street over from where the actual venue is which I had booked t 
to go to exactly. But yeah, I quickly walked down the alley and went, ah, that's probably why the driver couldn't go there. There's a tramway on George Street now. So yeah, well, it was, it was quite a nice little area, actually. Um, it was all sort of, you know, I mean, obviously I had trams running up and down every once in a while, but you know, they had a lot of nice seated area. I hadn't, hadn't been up since I think obituary and um, Lybark, so it was like two years ago, or two and a half years ago, I think, so I don't think all of this stuff had been completed by that stage, so yeah, um, had a seat there and ordered my healthy dinner, which was a K-Dog from a Korean chicken place that was essentially a... Um, you know, a corn dog or a dagwood dog sort of style. It was a chicken sausage with mozzarella and covered in like batter and deep fried, of course. Mm. <laughs> Here's a picture of it. It's, uh, it was bloody tasty, actually. I'll give that one, uh, I think, nine out of ten. I think I should have had. I should have bought more. Actually, that was my sole amount of dinner. But yeah, well, I've got a bit of padding. Should be right. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I sat down there and there's yeah, it was just really nice sort of atmosphere there. It was nice temperature, nice breeze. Uh, so yeah, I just sat there for a while, um, just admiring the locale and the local fat corgis. <laughs> they were very cute. Um, so yeah, then moseyed on over to the gig, which yeah, I got in the normal queue to get in the metro because there's been no ton of gigs at the metro. It's one of my favourite Sydney venues. It sounds bloody excellent it's really enjoyable as you'd see from my videos from Lybuck and obituary it's um yeah really cool setup but that wasn't where the gig was so I rather rapidly went through the queue and got told no nah, further up the alley so went into the the metro social which appears to be a new um setup that they've got there which after about eight flights of stairs or maybe not quite that many um ended up pretty much in the foyer of the normal metro which they'd closed off it's an area that's usually like merch. <laughs> I've bought heaps of t-shirts and stuff from there in the past. I have a feeling I might have seen a band in there once, but I can't remember exactly who that was, so uh, maybe not. But um, yeah, it was a smallish space, but it had an upstairs area as well, which was very handy for filming. Um, and yeah, it actually ended up being pretty good. They had massive scaffolding that looked <laughs> a little over the top, to tell the truth, but... I uh, know it was a nice sort of size venue, it was, I don't know, maybe 300, I'm not sure, I'm not very good at judging crowd size, but yeah, it looked pretty bloody good to me. Um, so, but yeah, I was quite happy with that, there was massive queue for merch, um, caught up with some friends, and yeah, all in all, quite a decent venue. <laughs> First band of the night were Faceless Burial from Melbourne, who, bloody killer, was uh, I think only my second time seeing them. Uh, they were nice and loud for this, which was appreciated. Occasionally the sound was a bit boomy, but uh, it, was, it was loud enough for my liking, for my 35 years of gigs with no earplugs, ears. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, um, as they're a three-piece, it's occasionally sort of sounds a bit weird when he does a solo because the, all the distortion just sort of drops out but it was, it was very nice to actually hear the bass player you know doing all these fiddly noodly bits that yeah sounded excellent and overall uh, they sounded great Max the drummer jeez oh, <laughs> boy can play um, yeah it was it was actually really good to watch him from up above as well I could actually see everything really clearly which was nice um, <laughs> I could also see uh, the backstage sort of area because it was like it was like higher up at the same level as I was but 
Um, I could see like Blood Incantation just thrashing away to um, I don't know one of, one of the better uh, Faceless Burial songs. They're obviously fans. I think they did just tour Europe together as well. So yeah, uh, it's good to see them getting into it. Um, so yeah, after four songs, I piked it and sat down for a bit because there was nice couches up there as well. But hey, I could hear perfectly well. I don't need to stare at three hairy blokes anymore <laughs> um and yeah the sound was good i could actually see through people's legs quite well too that was handy um yeah the i can never remember what their bloody song titles are called and they have rather verbose titles anyway so uh they did a, a slow song or a slow starting song that ripped according to my notes uh, no idea what that was, but yeah, everything they played was killer. It was uh, seemed to be a good mix. I did actually recognise some older songs in there, so yeah, it was um, killer, killer stuff. <laughs> second were Blood Incantation from Colorado I think uh, oh, bloody excellent really good uh, thankfully I was sober this time so I do actually recall <laughs> the gig which is very handy um, I had been upstairs but unfortunately everyone else had decided to go upstairs as well so I had a kind of crap view for a while I could what I was watching the bass player just just the bass player for quite a while but then I realized oh, maybe I could walk a little further around and sure enough got a perfect spot so um but yeah, that was bloody awesome. Um, dedicated a song to my mate Stu. So that was that was good to see. Um, you got vitri what is it? V vitrification of blood parts one and two, which they played back to back, which was really bloody awesome. Because I kind of prefer Starspawn their first album to the the newer one. I mean, nothing wrong with the new one as well, but Starspawn was just had that extra sort of demolish groove to it that ah oh, so killer. And those two songs in a row was bloody awesome really awesome um i also really enjoyed the the climactic solo of um what is it awakening from the dream which is um got an actual much longer title that's off their newer album that was killer but all in all really awesome night it's good to see the crowd moving around quite a bit for them as well so um yeah <laughs> so, it was excellent to see and yeah I, I really enjoy seeing a band just get into it so much they really seem to be enjoying themselves a lot and also good work to paul for not not caving and shaving his head or anything now that he's uh thinning a little as as we all are so good work bald metalheads unite <laughs> <laughs>
the highlight band for me really was Dead Congregation from Greece. Oh, jeez, these boys were brutal. <laughs> Tough as hell. Um, I finally relented and decided to have a drink or two, so um, I scooted downstairs and grabbed a jack, couple of cans of Jack and Coke. And um, this one, instead of going upstairs to watch, I um, actually went to the side of the stage. Oh, I ultimately ended up there, and yeah, it was a really good spot, actually. I was sort of behind, like to the side of the PA, but still sounded killer. So, yeah, there I stayed, mainly so I could like watch the drama, because around that boy is a beast bloody hell really good to watch um so yeah i <laughs> sorry for the wobbly footage but i started filming just as they played schizma or whatever it's called uh which is one of my favorite songs and of course the second i started filming that bloody awesome groovy sort of riff kicks in and i'm like yeah got a headbang sorry <laughs> so the footage is a bit shit for now um but yeah, it was really awesome to see that. Um, they did the classic sort of hit of uh, Only Ashes Remain and Promulgation of the Fall, the first two tracks of that album. And that, in a row, was bloody awesome. The title tracks, just that sort of epic sort of style. Um, they also played a new song, I think, judging by a playlist I found on YouTube of them a couple of months ago. It's called, what is it? Dismal Remains. Yeah, it sounded killer. So I think they've been around for like, since 2004 and they've got what have they got like three EPs and two albums hopefully we'll get another album soon because <laughs> get on with it boys um, but no they, they were just awesome really intense as well I, I love to see a band just getting into it so much um, they were not super chatty between bands I mean they, they were more chatty than Faces Burial who I don't think said anything at all except maybe a thanks at the end um but blood incantation ruled on the uh chatting with the crowd side of things paul had a long ramble about i don't know i couldn't even work out what he was talking about but he was enjoying himself so it's all good but yeah dead kong oh bloody hell it was just intense um all the the slow bits worked really well as well just to sort of you know one bass line for like a couple of minutes and then kicks back into nastiness yeah, that's that's what they were. They were nasty, just uh, very much up my my alley. Uh, that was bloody awesome and really good to watch side stage as well. Um, and the crowd seemed to be quite enjoying it. I was sort of marginally worried that there was a would be a heap of blood incantation fanboys that would just leave straight after them, but uh, everyone was still there at the end. So yeah, bloody awesome, very enjoyable. Once the gig finished, I um, just hung around and chatted with a few mates. It was good to catch up with Simon from Explosive Action and um, bag him out for buying all the, the cool stuff from New Town, including two bloody Incubus albums. Oh, very jealous. Um, so, yeah, that, that was fun. And then um, decided to go boozing with a couple of Canberra mates. So, uh, yeah, we got knocked back from a few pubs first off. One, I'm not quite sure why, seeing they just let two other crusty-looking metalheads in, but... Maybe they had their crusty metalhead quota reached. The other one is because one of our mates had shorts on. Yeah, good one, Dean. <laughs> but um, so we, we ended up at the Century Bar, which is, um, I don't think I'd actually been before, or like after two more friggin' flights of stairs, we were suddenly in a darts bar. I was like, okay. And no, I'm not talking like, you know, old geezers with fucking ciggies hanging out and playing darts and having pints. It was like fancy plastic darts or something or other onto a... With, which is probably not a bad idea in pubs. You don't really want sharp darts necessarily. Uh, but yeah, then again, I'm sure there's plenty of pubs around the world with deadly darts. But um, yeah, these ones were plastic. I didn't actually play them, but uh, from all reports, it was kind of weird, but it didn't look too bad. Um, and yeah, there was even footage, like, you know, camera video screens up showing other people playing fancy darts so yeah i don't know what was going on there there was another uh another group of metalheads arrived at one point and um obviously didn't couldn't get anywhere else but um there was beer yeah it's all good so that was that was fun it's nice hanging out there if a little sort of out of our element then the music was not quite what we were just listening to but yeah what the hell it was enjoyable um so after that we thought yeah maybe get a bit of food so ended up getting a bit of pizza from my classic pizza place on liverpool street that seems to feature very regularly in my uh, sydney gigs because mainly because i remember where it is and i'm sure it's open bloody all night long for uh, lots of other uh, slightly tipsy people to um line their stomachs with um 
but yeah, one of our mates showed us a place just a couple of shops away that was sold squashed chickens. It was essentially a, I think it was like a half a chook or something that was deboned and just hammered flat and then battered and battered. And um, yeah, sadly I wasn't quite, um, wasn't quite hungry enough for that, but had a bit of pizza, which as you'll see, looked pretty tasty. I'll give that one a very drunken nine out of 10 for that one. Uh, after that, got an Uber back to my hotel, and which included the Uber driver having to slow for some rather tipsy woman staggering across like three lanes of traffic. Oh, good old Sydney. Um, and yeah, then had a pretty crap night's sleep, but ow, what the hell. So next morning I woke up. I had planned on going to um, do a bit of uh, record shopping at Newtown because it's a, it's a suburb where there's a number of record shops. Um, but I looked them all up and they were all open you know, a couple of hours later, so I thought, oh, fuck this, I'm out of here. Um, and yeah, just checked out and started driving back. Um, stopped at a place that pretty much every trip to Sydney seems to include this. There's a place called Pheasant's Nest. It's, a, um, it's a bit, just a bit out of Sydney. It's like a truck stop that I call Pheasant's Nest. But um, yeah, it's been there many a time. So I stopped there for breakfast, which was like a bodgy machine coffee that was... Yeah, too hot, but did the trick. And this horrible, horrible bloody egg and bacon bagel, which oh, was just foul. <laughs> I don't even... The texture of the bagel was just bizarre. I don't even really want to think about it too much more. The egg was like, I don't know, sort of undercooked and runny and just... Bleh. Bacon was passable, I think, but yeah, two out of ten for that one. Mm, thumbs down. <laughs> really should have ordered the... um ham and cheese croissant that would have been a lot smarter i think but um yeah pretty uneventful trip back at least so it was um hadn't rained for a couple of days which is a rarity around this time of the year so yeah it was kind of nice and yeah got home to yummy luxa from my dear wife so uh, which i would rate 10 out of 10 that one definite definite winner that one so all in all bloody awesome weekend i only saw three bands cost a lot of money but yeah what the hell <laughs> <laughs> that was bloody awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>